I like the fact here that they, they cast you because they felt this eternally optimistic goodwill to all men Fred was pretty much to, in their eyes the Zemeckis and the producers this was Colin Firth even though your eldest son thought you should be playing Scrooge can you kind of recognise what, what, they, what they saw in you that they felt this is Fred bless their hearts they don't know me very well so <laughs> I'm delighted they think that way but um, if you'd spoken to Oliver Parker uh, about why he cast me as Dorian Gray, uh, in Dorian Gray as Lord Henry, it's because he said he know, he's known me for a very long time, and actually I am that black-hearted, uh, cynical, depraved human being. Well, so you, make up your mind, you know, who knows me better? Your family seemed to have a very high uh, opinion of you, because I know when you were cast as Darcy, your brother reacted to the news with, uh, isn't he supposed to be sexy? So they obviously do feel that... Yes, and one of my oldest friends actually said, no, I think you should play Darcy because there's no other, other actor on, in, in the whole of Equity who, who's quite as, as, as unpleasant as you are. So I, I really think it's you. Part of your appeal in, in this movie is, is the experience of motion capture. And there's a huge amount of preparation. You have to strip down to your underwear. They capture every angle. They capture every facial expression. But the great payoff was that you, when you actually went to act, there was just purely acting out the entire scene, no cameras in front of you, no editing, cutting, and reshooting and all that. Would you recommend it for an actor's experience to try it? it yeah, to... I would. I, I, we all would. I mean, I, you'll every, you can go through every member of the cast. I mean, I know we're promoting a film and we're not going to say anything, you know, you know um, I wouldn't say otherwise, but it's also true. I, it's shocking how liberating it is. There is no other convention that's been invented yet for actors which frees you up to the extent that this does. And there's a, I know there's a paradox to that because... You know the technology is is so complex and and unfamiliar, and the preparation is so bizarre that it's it's odd to just suddenly be set free when the moment comes. You know you have to do a strange thing before you start. You have to do something called a T pose. We all just stand like this, and apparently that's so that the sensors in the room can recognise you and get a uh, kind of get a, a reference on you or something. And then Bob Zemeckis says action, and then you just do the scene. You don't do the scene with an eye on the camera over there or knowing where that is. You don't do the scene a little bit bigger because it's a master shot or a little bit smaller because it's a close-up. You don't do the scene facing that way because the audience is there or a bit louder because there are people in the upper circle. You just do it as you would if it, was a, if it were really happening or as if you were kids in the playground. There's no direction to play. In. I mean, you have to get used to that a little bit. And Jim was saying this, that in some ways you're, you're so used to thinking of the camera being in a particular direction you, have, you almost have to get used to it being more real. So you can get as close to each other as you want. You don't have to worry about getting in the way of anybody. Um, and you just start acting, and you don't stop until the scene's over. And it's done. It's done. You don't cover it. You don't come in and do the close-ups. You don't change positions. You do it once, and it's done. And the only reason you do it again is to do it better or to do it differently from an acting point of view, but certainly for, you don't have to do it again for technical reasons. I've been told I have to wrap up. That was very, very quick. Well, we don't have time for one more. Just the, the, one more. Well, what, I was going to ask you, well, I was going to ask about the motion capture itself. For me, it's not quite there yet. I thought Beowulf, Polar Express, there's still that slightly dead-eyed look. There's a, it looks like people have had facial surgery that morning when they went on set, and people run like Ronnie Corbett. I don't know whether <laughs> there's, uh, for you, whether it's, it's kind of works yet. Obviously, you're in this movie, so you've kind of a certain amount of, you know, can't see the wood for the trees, maybe, because you're, you're really sort of watching, you know, the technical side of it. But do you feel that it's working yet? As, as it's as impossible for me to judge. I think, um, you know, I am in it from that point of view. I think that what, what it's, it, it facilitates for us as actors is irresistible. I think we've got to keep exploring this. I think that it delivers some fantastic things. You've got a film like this, which is heightened, and it's to do with the supernatural. And, you know, you, you can age a man without having to put putty on his face. You can fly through the air, you can make ghosts appear and disappear, and you can do it with actors actually doing it themselves. You can have a man playing a little boy, you can have a little boy playing a man. It, it, it's, it's absolutely extraordinary how many, how many possibilities it has. Um, you know, the thing about the eyes, I think how they're working on it. I, I think that in a story which, like this, is heightened in, to, to a great extent, I think it works. I think it, you know, we're, su we're supposed to, to have a, a world which is stylized and, uh, and, uh, and, and adventurous and intense. And um, so I think, you know, at the moment, it, it depends on the material you're working with. You know, I don't think it's sort of, I, don't, I can't see it appealing to Ken Loach at the moment. <laughs> but I think that day, that day, even that day could come. Rock and roll. Yeah. I got to go. Love you. It's all right. Take care.